again and welcome to Deeply Rooted. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and I am happy to be here with you. Sharing, talking, reflecting alongside you about what it means to experience grace. Let me start with a quote. The foolish man seeks happiness in the distance. The wise grow, grows it under his feet. Let me say that again. The foolish man seeks happiness in the distance. The wise grows it under his feet. James Oppenheim. Wisdom is earned. With each hardship, there's a lesson. Each time we make the decision to be patient, learn the details, be coached, or become an apprentice of life, we find rich soil on which grows beautiful, new, well-earned successes. Sometimes we have to choose to take the long way around, take our time, wait on something, save for it, earn it when we could easily have it given to us. And that is where we find what wisdom is and what true freedom feels like. This is from a book called The Art of Noticing by Rob Walker. It's 131 ways to spark creativity, find inspiration, and discover joy in the everyday. One of the experiences he invites us to try is to conduct a scavenger hunt. This is what he says. A few years ago, I was in San Francisco, a city I'd visited at least a half a dozen times before. With no spare moments for sightseeing, I decided to look, wherever I went, for security cameras. This exercise lacked an obvious point. I'm interested in the proliferation of surveillance technology, but on this trip, I was not conducting research. I just wanted to inject some novelty into the way I saw neighborhoods I'd seen before. It was a game, a single object scavenger hunt played for the fun of noticing. I didn't know it at the time, but I was creating a mental search image That's a term I'm borrowing from the writer and psychology professor, Alexandra Horowitz, who in turn credits it to a noted bird watcher, Luke Tinbergen. Mm -hmm. Tinbergen noticed that songbirds tend to seek out a specific species of beetle or whatever that they evidently prefer to devour over over other edible insects. Having a predetermined search image helps them spot their prey of choice. Creating a mental search image, Horowitz explains, is how we find our car keys, spot our friends in a crowd, and even find patterns that we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. In her useful and fun book called On Looking, she writes, everyone needs a, a mechanism to select what out of all the things in the world they should both look for and at and what they should ignore. That's search image, the visual form of the expectation that allows you to find some meaning in chaos. In San Francisco, security cameras turned out to be more pervasive than I would have guessed. Some were stealthily placed while others were aggressively visible presumably as deterrence to would-be criminals. And to this day, I now notice cameras wherever I go. This was my first experience in a practice of conscious noticing that blossomed into an obsession. I find objects and recurring features in a variety of environments. The trick is to choose something that's uh, ubiquitous and taken for granted. I've studied payphones, where are they clustered, where are they rare, how many are broken, 
and standpipes, which ones have been modified to prevent their use as de facto stools, and neighborhood watch signs, which neighborhoods have them and which don't. I looked in big cities and small communities, at home and on the road. At times, there was a tangible payoff. I wrote about the defacement of a neighborhood watch sign in Savannah, Georgia, which rarely undercut the message of vigilant safety, and about standpipes adorned with spiky add-ons whose only functions is to keep everyone from resting on them. But mostly, my scavenger hunts are just entertaining and addictive. In San Francisco, I took pictures of some of the security cameras I spotted. And when I called my wife from the airport at the end of that trip, I marveled to her about the astonishing array of surveillance technology I noticed. Please, she said, do not wander around an airport photogra photographing the security cameras. Good point. Sometimes it's better just to look or rather, to see. Michelle Dean says, paying attention is the only way that, or the only thing that guarantees insight. It's the only real weapon we have against power too. You can't fight things you can't actually see. <laughs> I have something to tell you. You are the beloved of God. When John was baptizing people in the Jordan River, Jesus came to be baptized too. And as he was praying, the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. As a Christian, I am firmly convinced that the decisive moment of Jesus' public life was his baptism, when he heard the divine affirmation, You are my beloved, on whom my favor rests. In this core experience, Jesus is reminded in a deep, deep way of who he really is. There is in each of us an inner voice of love that says, you are the beloved of God. I want you to claim your belovedness. You don't have to get caught in searches that lead nowhere. Neither do you have to become a victim of a manipulative world or get trapped in any kind of addiction. You can choose to reach out now for true inner freedom and find it ever so fully.